All right, so a mouse doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be perfect for you. This couldn't be any more truer in the case of the SteelSeries Aerox 3. There are some glaring flaws with the Aerox 3 wireless, but damn. Is this shape good? I mean, SteelSeries has always had amazing shades, but as anybody who has ever owned one could probably tell you, the QC issues have really bit them in the ass. You'll see a bunch of praise online for the new mouse that just came out, and then a few months pass, and the glue on the side grips is coming off. Well, there's no side grips to worry about today, thankfully, but sadly, there are some other things that went wrong with the construction of this mouse. Now, SteelSeries has always been pretty fair with their pricing. This one is coming in at $100, which is right in the middle of the pack in terms of wireless mice. The Model O wireless just dropped at $80, and these mice are very similar in performance, size, and shape. And we'll get into which one I think is better later on. Then you have people like Logitech that are dropping $150 mice on the higher end, and then you have another top dog in the wireless space, the Razer Viper Ultimate, which is also dropping at $150, but that one has like a charging dock and some other things going on with it. Now, normally, with Steel Series, they throw a bunch of names at you and gimmicks with their new sensor, trying to bait you into paying more money. Luckily, they didn't charge a whole lot more than the Glorious Model O Wireless, and it's actually quite competitive versus the rest of the competition. Now, Steel Series has also decided to jump on the lightweight mice bandwagon and went with a pretty middle ground weight at 66 grams. I weighed mine in at 67 grams on my scale, not a huge difference there. Uh, most companies seem to choose that sweet spot between 60 and 80 grams, so no surprise there, they kind of played it safe. This one is a little bit more back heavy and not as balanced as some other mice on the market. This would in turn cause the mouse to not stay level when you're raising it and this led to like the mouse sometimes hitting the mouse pad on the way down or dragging on the way up. It's not so bad with claw grip but this could cause some serious issues if you are a fingertip grip user because if your fingers are at the front of the mouse, the mouse will tilt near the back. Now onto the build quality. The coating does feel good, it has a slight rough texture to it. It does a good job of keeping sweat build up low. The structural integrity of the mouse is actually pretty weak as you can actuate the side buttons even with one hand. So if you're somebody that likes to grip their mouse really hard, I would probably stay away from this mouse. They also cut out a ton of holes around the entire mouse. Normally, or at least lately, companies have been leaving the bottom intact, just cutting holes off the top, or even not even having holes like the Razer Viper Ultimate. The holes on the bottom make the bottom portion of this mouse really weak. You can actually press down on a button and it'll actually change the DPI. Imagine if this happens during a match, you would just be screwed over big time. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be a feature. I couldn't find anywhere in the description that that's supposed to be a thing. So I'm just gonna assume that it's not supposed to be a thing. So uh, that's not good. Definitely need some work. I would like to see them fill up the bottom and try to line it up some other way with the components perhaps. Like this little white RGB strip at the bottom uh, or this little layer here, um, it just looks ugly. And I feel like it adds unnecessary weight to the mouse. Like they could have just put some lightweight LEDs in here and probably make this mouse even lighter and the aesthetics would have been way better. Another thing that kind of went wrong with this mouse is the shells. The mouse one and two kind of rub together near the top of the buttons and it gives this crunchy feeling. Keep in mind that my fingers hit towards the front of the mouse, but I do know some people that like to hold their mouse near the back portion. Or if you have smaller hands, your fingers are gonna hit closer to that area, that danger zone. So that's not a good thing as well. All these issues kind of worry me as to the long-term durability of this mouse. Still serious, you gotta improve on this, big time. There's six buttons in total and they have some nice curves to them. Not as curved as like a death adder from Razer, but just enough to give some nice comfort. The scroll wheel has a rubberized feel and there's some etches in it. And even with those etches, the rubber still feels a little bit too slippery for my taste and I can only see this wearing down more over time. Up top is the DPI button. It's pretty small, which I think is a good thing because there's less of a chance that you're gonna hit it during gameplay. The side buttons have this sharp, pointy pyramid like shape and this is to help with the lift off of the mouse and if you guys have been following my videos in the past i haven't liked this but this mouse it actually grew on me the side buttons unfortunately have a lot of pre-travel um, it seems like they put all their energy into the mouse one and two into those golden micro ip54 switches and like i said those feel great as long as you don't hit them near that danger area and those are very light and crispy i like them a lot so let's drop a sound test so you guys can hear what these sound like and i'll compare them to some other mice in the market right now
As for the mouse feed, they are PTFE, but I don't think that they're 100% virgin PTFE. There's some other stuff in there. They didn't, you know, they're not that cloudy white translucent ones that we've been seeing recently. And they've also made another strange design choice. They put these circular mouse feet on here um, and they're concave. So you're not getting the full surface area of the entire mouse. They kind of have a ridge around the outside where the mouse glides on them. But eventually these will wear down and it'll flatten and even out, but it just seems like a waste. It would have been nice to just see them put some big mouse feet on here like the dowie mice or even the size of like the glorious mice would have been nice all that being said the mouse does glide pretty nicely but my copies start to get a bunch of lint and stuff built up around each mouse foot and this lint buildup i could see in the long run maybe slowing down the mouse or catching or affecting the performance of it it's just not good i can't wait to replace these and this is starting to make me feel like maybe they aren't glued down properly and maybe they're moving around and the glue is getting exposed and then catching lint it's just not good all right so after everything that i've said i got something to admit to you guys this is my new main it ain't perfect but the shape the shape is incredible it's the shape that we needed in a wireless lightweight form and until somebody else gives this to us this is going to be the go-to mouse for claw grip it brings over some of the same design choices like some other mice like the steel series sensei or in-game xm1 so if you guys love those mice you're gonna love this one because the aerox 3 has the hump near the back and it flares out like a diamond and it naturally forms to the curvature of your hand this thing is a dream to hold the shape is damn near perfect it's almost sad that all these other things went wrong with it because it might make people overlook this mouse right now you might be saying bt you're sugarcoating again no 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 shape is king sometimes a mouse doesn't have to be perfect to be perfect for you it's slightly smaller than the glorious model o and the hump is definitely more comfortable on this mouse than the o it does have an ambidextrous shape so you can fingertip grip and claw grip this but like i said before the weight distribution is a little bit off so the back portion might drag on your mouse pad if you're a fingertip grip user so just keep that in mind in that instance i would just go with the glorious model o or the razor viper ultimate my hands are 19.5 by 8 centimeters and this mouse fits perfectly it's a medium sized mouse if you have really wide hands like 10 centimeters plus start looking at the model o wireless or if you're looking for something to palm grip the o or the razor viper ultimate are going to be great i do find this more comfortable than the xm1 because it's a little bit more narrow if there's one thing still series knows how to do is to make shapes and the aerox is perfect in that regard as for the sensor they're using still series proprietary sensor the true move air sensor this is another pixar wireless sensor the sensor is seated a little bit further back near your palm so wrist aimers it could affect your aim but if you're an arm aimer you should be safe that being said the sensor is really good like we've seen in other pixar sensors the liftoff distance seems to be at a good height as well i don't know the official height i couldn't find it but it feels like it's around two millimeters and there's no way to change this within the software the software is the still series engine 3 software you can configure the dpi which goes up to 18,000 dpi and set it at five different levels that are accessible through the dpi button on the mouse with different colors that will flash once you change it there's also a sleep timer in there i suggest turning this up because this mouse is really annoying once it goes to sleep it doesn't work like other mice where you just move around the mouse and the sensor starts to pick up no 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 you have to like click a button and then it takes a couple of seconds for the mouse to rev back up it goes into like a really deep sleep now it gets you more battery life but it's going to be really annoying at the same time there's a high efficiency mode that will turn off the rgb and the illumination smart mode will turn off the RGB while you're moving and reappear when it's stationary. Uh, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. And I guess it will save you battery overall because you're not gonna be looking at the mouse when you're moving it around on your desk when you're trying to be focused on the game. You can adjust the pulling rate up to 1000 Hertz. There's also a section for acceleration and deceleration. Uh, I honestly would just leave this off because you don't want anything affecting the movement of your crosshair that's out of your control. You can also assign different commands to the buttons. There's also a bunch of different presets. You wanna change the RGB lighting by section. Uh, there's a color shift, there's breathing modes, rainbow wave modes. You got everything here. As for the wireless, I've been using this mouse for over a week and the battery life has held up. I haven't had to charge it once. I think this is due to having that deep sleep like I mentioned before. It gets around 80 hours of battery life with the 2.4 gigahertz adapter, which is a USB-C adapter. Thank you, SteelSeries. 
The cable is a bit stiff if you do want to play while charging. It feels like it's a generation behind. It feels like those old braided cables that we used to see on other chargers in the past, but just a little bit more fluid. That's the best way to describe it. They also have the option to switch to Bluetooth mode and you get 200 hours, which is incredible, but slow your roll. Uh, you only want to do this when doing like tasks or browsing because it actually puts your pulling rate at a maximum of 125 Hertz. And that is the amount of times that your computer is going to be checking the connection between it and the mouse. So if you have less like 125, five hertz you're gonna have less accuracy your cursor is gonna you're gonna find your cursor is gonna be jumping around on the screen you're gonna have a lot more interruptions and things like that so definitely don't game with the Bluetooth mode that being said the 2.4 gigahertz performs amazingly I had no incidences of disconnecting or interference solid all around now as for gaming I have to say I even after all these flaws I can't help but love this mouse I instantly vibed with it I never felt like I had a foreign object in my hand it just felt so so right from the moment I picked it up. If you're a claw grip user, this mouse is one of the first wireless lightweight mice to come to the market that I personally feel like is tailored to us specifically. Whereas other mice are trying to work with a bunch of different grip styles. It seriously melted it in my hand and I couldn't tell where my hand started and the mouse stopped. And that's always a good place to be. I was hitting shots that I would normally miss or would be slightly off target with. And I feel like I was in total control when using this mouse. It's just a travesty that all these other things are going wrong with the mouse. It might cause people, like I said, to just not even bother. or want to risk their hard earned cash to pick this mouse up. And this mouse could be perfect for those people but due to the QC issues, they might look elsewhere. Finally have a new main and it is this mouse, but at the same time, I'm weary. I have this looming feeling that it is not going to last, that the walls are gonna come crashing down and that one day this mouse is gonna stop working. So this is one of the most frustrating mice I've ever had to review. It really tears me up inside. I really want to recommend it because I use it. And I think the shape is amazing. It's one of the best claw grip wireless lightweight mice out. And the main buttons are really good too, but is that enough to save it? Is it enough to recommend it with everything else that's going wrong with the mouse? I really wanna say yes in my heart. You know, with my heart, I wanna say yes. I wanna tell you guys to go out and buy this right now. It's amazing. But my mind tells me to tell you guys to wait until another company makes something with a similar shape and better QC. And just, you know, just so your dollars are a little bit more safe. All right, guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to go game with this mouse.